IFR hack number one, verbalize and confirm altitudes and headings. So let's watch as a Japanese train driver points to confirm signals along the track. If you Google, why do Japanese train drivers point at everything, here's what it says. Whatever a train driver in Japan does, they confirm their actions with the help of physical movements combined with vocalization. That's the key word, vocalization. What they are doing is confirming something by pointing and verbalizing it and thus reinforcing it in their mind. I suggest you do the same thing in the airplane. If you're given a new altitude or heading, point to it and verbalize it and it'll reinforce it and confirm it in your mind. Talk to yourself, even if you're by yourself. Chances are we're gonna get that and we're gonna reset our altitude. Bug 6, Echo 50, IFR hack number two, anticipate the next frequency. As you're flying along, listen to other aircraft as they're given frequency changes. If that aircraft is traveling the same direction as you are, there's a good chance that that's the next frequency that you'll be given. So go ahead and put it into your radio and standby. It's just one way to stay ahead of the airplane. Southwest 3080, contact Fort Worth Center on 132.27. IFR hack number three, mark your autopilot circuit breaker. I have a red cap on my autopilot circuit breaker so I can quickly pull it if my autopilot goes into a runaway trim. This hack applies to both VFR and IFR. I purchased mine from Aircraft Spruce and Specialty. IFR hack number four, heading bug for hand flying. Notice my course is straight up and down. In other words, my ground track matches my desired track. In this situation, I had a westerly crosswind that required a crab angle. Once I found the heading that would match my ground track with my desired track, I set my heading bug and now all I have to do is fly the heading bug. This works extremely well when tracking the localizer. <laughs> IFR hack number five, review terrain and obstacles prior to the flight. I hope you guys appreciate my sense of humor, but this is a serious one. Please, 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 before you fly, review terrain and obstacles for both your departure and destination airport. Here are a couple examples. Gunnison, Colorado, obviously up in the mountains, in the Rocky Mountains, there's terrain. If you look at the instrument approach plate for the ILS Runway 6, note the tower or obstacle that I've circled, 8724. Minimums on this approach for straight in are 8590. It looks like just a tower, but in fact, if you actually look in Google Earth, there's a hill there. Imagine you're coming in here at night, IFR, but the visibility's great. It's just a really pitch black night. Somebody pulls out to the runway in front of you, you have to do a go around, and you're gonna enter a right downwind for runway six, which is the uh, downwind that they suggest you use, and you lose track or lose situational area or altitude, you could impact this terrain here. So the point is go in, if you're flying in a mountainous area and look in Google Earth at your departure and destination and just look what the terrain is like, look at where the low flat areas are in case you have an emergency where you might want to set down. And I don't know what the Jepson chart looks like, but I believe the government charts kind of underemphasize some of these terrain and obstacles. Here's the second example, Nashville, John C. Toon Airport, flew in here recently. I don't have any video of that because I was busy, it was uh, IFR. But look at the towers highlighted in the red circles. These are big towers. And again, if you're not paying attention, if you look at the instrument approach plate, you might just not realize how truly tall they are if you don't actually go and read the numbers. 
And this big guy here at 2049, this tower is 1.5 nautical miles from the extended center line of the runway. So again, you might start flying this approach and, and then break out and cancel IFR and decide you're gonna go enter a, a downwind uh, to land on 2-0 and might completely lose your situational awareness relative to this tower if you're not paying attention. So the point is, review the train and obstacles for both your departure and destination airports and use all the things that you can use, all the sources of information. So on these examples, I showed you a sectional chart and Google Earth and the instrument approach plate. Study all three for both the airport you're departing from and your destination. Hope these have helped. More videos soon.